All right, beautiful day at Pescadero. I'm out here with Tad, and uh, we're gonna, what are we gonna do, Tad? We're gonna paint. All right, so I'm thinking of making something of this scene here. I'm working on a 16 by 24 inch panel, which is a two by three ratio. So I may need to compress things a little bit, uh, but I do want to include the rocks and some of the shadows cast from the rocks. All right, you got an idea? I think I got an idea. So you're doing a square format and square you're going to focus on this area of the rock right here. Is yeah, that right? That's right. Okay. And then obviously some of the water coming in too. That's right. right yeah. All right. I've got my usual palette of colors today. Titanium white, cadmium yellow medium, burnt sienna, glycerin crimson, ultramarine blue, and phthalo blue green shade. I've got some leftover turquoise vivid deep on the panel uh, from, or on my palette from the last painting. I'll probably use this. All right, I'm sketching in burnt sienna. Actually, this is gonna be tricky to film a panel this big. Uh, so bear with me. I do hold the camera in my hand and a bigger panel I need to get back from uh, to include the whole scene. But I've been finding that painting larger I'm getting better results, easier to have more energy in the brushwork, things I've talked about before. So I want the rocks coming out over here like this. All right, and I might want a suggestion of land or fog. We'll see. Out in the distance like that, just some kind of interest over here. Then I think I want to include the waterline. The top of the cliffs here are kind of straight I want to make them a little more irregular in the painting so it's not just this fast line going off in the distance. Maybe a few speed bumps along the way to slow the, uh, slow the viewer down. So that's the arrangement right there. All right, I start off with a very general shape and if I like the placement of the shapes, then I start adding some detail not much just still focusing on shapes but but maybe just a little bit more uh, focus on some of the contours of the rocks in this case and then also the next thing i'll do is start squinting at the scene and mapping out the shadow pattern once the shadow shapes are in place then it's you know i'm not going to worry about the light changing too much because i'll already have um, the shadows established. For my shadow mixture, I'm going with ultramarine blue, a touch of alizarin crimson, and burnt sienna. All right, I'm squinting at the scene to simplify the shapes, and I'm gonna start mapping out these dark portions here. I'm also paying attention to uh, how the shapes are working compositionally. I have no problem changing things to suit the composition. All right, this shape here is a little bit bigger kind of swings down more like this and something like that right there using a worn out number eight here to scrub in the darks and a painting like this the shadow pattern really is the composition I want to make sure that I have a pleasing arrangement and these are rocks down below and I want to have this uh, sh shadow shape here be interconnected I don't want to have a bunch of just like marks like this I want to have connected shadow shapes I will have some disconnected rocks out in the water but I want the big shapes to be connected let's check in with Tad real quick here Got your composition, very simple, which is great. And I see now you're like starting to put in some of the sky reflections on the water. Cool, you know, simple is best. Yeah. So this is a little darker than mid-tone. I'm probably gonna need to lighten it up. I do wanna work quickly and spontaneously. I'm just squinting at the scene again and looking for the dark water pattern uh, there's light along the top of the rocks so i don't want to i don't want to paint over those light portions as i mentioned uh, keeping things spontaneous 
usually results in a better painting. And this is a brand new number eight natural bristle flat. So I can cover a lot of area with it pretty quickly. Mixed in a bit more yellow to the paint because it's a little bit greener in the foreground. I've really been enjoying painting over old panels because during the scrub-in process, the old painting will usually um, give me ideas for, you know, patterns in the waves and patterns in the rocks. When you're painting from scratch on a new panel, you don't get any of those suggestions. You're on your own. And the thing I like about the suggestions or the little leftover bits of paint from the or patterns from the old painting is there are things I would not come up with on my own. I think we tend to overthink things where it, it's very hard to let go and just create random, random shapes. And when you're painting something like the water or clouds, you want them to be loose and random and not too careful. Human beings like order, we'll order everything up. So we have nice, perfectly shaped clouds or perfectly shaped waves when that's not really how things are. For the sky, I've got a mixture of titanium white, ultramarine blue, and a bit of phthalo blue. I have mixed in some liquid and odorless mineral spirits. I want to keep the mixture thin so I can cover the panel quickly. There's some fog in the distance, kind of creating some interesting shapes. So instead of land back here, I think I'll start with uh, fog instead and the fog almost looks pink it's kind of a light color so I'll probably use titanium white with a bit of alizarin crimson all right so I added titanium white and alizarin crimson to the mix I'll probably come over this color with some lighter or warmer tones just to have the warm on top playing against the cool down below beneath. Uh, my mix is getting a little dirty, that's all right. All right, so putting in some sand down here. There is wet sand in this area. I'm going to start with the dry sand. For the wet sand, I've mixed in a purple mixture that I made with alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue. The rocks are warmer in this area and then it gets bluer or cooler in this area even though it is still in the light so i'm putting in some of these warmer areas even though these rocks are in the light they're still pretty dark i don't want to lighten them up too much now i've mixed in some titanium white and ultramarine blue because as i mentioned there's there's sort of a bluer tone over here All right, adding the light on top of these rocks. It's a little too dark, but a good starting point. And the top of these rocks is a little bit cooler in temperature. Yeah, I admire your gusto trying to, you know, like painting a square, a seascape or landscape is always really challenging for me, mainly because there's a lot of area here uh, to fill you know with random wave activity and you can look at that two ways i mean it could be fun or it could be really daunting you know depend on how you look at it right yeah. all right so i've got some titanium white and ultramarine blue here a lot of this area down here is white water kind of chaos and i want the white water to be an interesting shape that works compositionally as well. Okay, and there are some wave patterns here, like breaking wave, maybe here, something like that. I've mentioned this in previous videos. I've had trouble painting some of these patterns in the white water just because they become too busy and draw too much attention. Again, I want it to work compositionally. 
but I'm gonna try to suggest some of that, you know, some of those patterns. All right, so there's the block in. Uh, this is basically the painting. Now I'm gonna come in and add thicker paint and adjust some of the colors and values. First thing I do after the block in is start re-establishing the darks or looking for the darkest darks. So I've got a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And I'm just gonna add the darkest darks to these shapes, but I wanna keep the shapes intact so that the shadow shapes are intact and the light shapes are intact. One of the advantages of painting over a new panel as opposed to painting over an old painting is that you can have transparent darks. And I feel like transparent darks are often more luminous than opaque darks, which seem to be kind of flat and also move forward in the picture plane. All right, so it's always important to stand back uh, and look for magic. If you're having some magical moments in your painting, you wanna make sure you stand back and you catch them before you paint over them. You know, oftentimes we're in autopilot and we just, we don't even notice that we've just painted over something that uh, was really special. I'm trying to match the value of this, uh, this scrub in, even though the color is more of a green in the shadow here, I'm using the previous, the scrub in as a guide to determine how dark or light I wanna make my shadow mixture. It's kind of a green color in here. It's often hard to determine what color it is in the shadows and definitely warmer. So I just added a touch of yellow and titanium white and it feels like it's pretty close. I might add a few warmer notes if necessary. And I kind of want to leave some of the purple. The tide is going out and it's revealing some seaweed that's got a lot of red in it. And I, I want to include that because I think it'll be a nice complement to the greens in the water. So I'm always looking for opportunities to add reds into a painting. All right, now I'm reestablishing the lights. It's very important to make sure that I know the extreme, the extreme values that I have, the lights and the darks, in order to judge all the middle values. And I'm keeping the brush loaded. More paint equals more color, higher values. All right, adding some lighter portions to the fog. And I'm using titanium white with burnt sienna and cadmium yellow medium. So it's actually kind of an orangish color. All right, yeah, it looks good. I think the decision to Dark in the water in the foreground was a good one. Lots of nice color. Love that uh, ultramarine blue there. That's cool. All right, so here's what I finished up with. This painting took a little over an hour to complete, probably an hour and a half. Uh, I do feel like I broke up the simple shapes a bit too much. In particular, the white water here. I would like the white water shape to be more unified and then also simplify some of these rocks as well uh, so that if you squint at the painting, you see uh, an arrangement of simple, strong shapes. All right, this painting is also 16 by 24 inches. It was done a few days before. I feel like it did a better job keeping the shapes unified in this painting and therefore I think it's much stronger. Um, there are basically four shapes in this painting. I feel like the sky and water because they're close enough in value is one shape. White water is one shape. This rock pattern here is one shape and then the sand down here. So there's four shapes, very simple. It's a pleasing arrangement of shapes and therefore I think it's a much stronger painting. All right, so how did I lose track of the big shapes? By failing to walk back from the painting enough. Typically when I'm not filming, I'm walking back constantly, usually about 10 or 12 feet for a painting of this size. Um, but when I'm filming, and this is a habit I have to break, I'm holding the camera, I get into the process of filming, and I don't walk back enough, and therefore it's easier to lose track of the overall picture. So 
uh, yeah, just another reminder to walk back from your work to make sure that the composition is remaining intact. Uh, so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. Got a bunch of extra videos on there and a materials list. Um, and like I said, it does help support the channel, helps keep me making these videos and it's much appreciated. So check it out. I will also put a link to um, Tad's Instagram down below. So be sure to take a look at his work. Other than that, stay creative and I'll see you guys in the next video.